Welcome to Everyday Cooking with Ann Sigurd, where I will show you how easy it is to make delicious, nutritious food on a budget, step by step from scratch. Subscribe to my channel and I will become your personal cooking coach. In today's video, you'll find a full recipe and a link to my cookbook in the description below. Today, we're going to be making Ann's famous orange rolls. These rolls have really become famous. We have made these rolls for so many people who have asked for this recipe. We have sold these rolls for $60 a pan. So everybody wants these rolls and they want to know how to make them. And when I try to tell them how to make it, they go, they don't turn out as good as yours. So we're hopefully today is the day that we're going to show you step by step how to make these orange rolls turn out just as beautiful as Ann Sigurd. And my daughter. To start the recipe, I'm going to introduce all of the ingredients. We have bread flour, we have milk, I like to use whole milk, uh, we have oranges, we have uh, vegetable oil, sugar, yeast, and eggs, and I think that's it. That's all that we have. So I'm going to get started by, the first thing that we like to do when we start uh, this recipe is we take a, just a small bowl and about a third of a cup of warm water. Now this water, if you're not used to figuring out how to do yeast, if you're not familiar, needs to be at about 110 degrees. I've been making these for 30 years and I know by touch how warm the water needs to be and there, it's at temperature right now. So between 110 and 115 degrees, I'm going to put a third of a cup of water. Uh, I'm, I'm now going to add in to the water my yeast and actually a little bit of uh, sugar with the yeast will proof it just beautifully as you'll soon find out. So I'm going to get this proofing while we, before we get started with anything else. Sometimes it kind of sticks to the spoon but don't worry about that. Just mix it in with the water as easily and not worry about it. It's a little bit and it will a little bit okay here this is going to proof over here while we get started with the next step the next step we're going to do is we are going to scald our milk now i don't really understand the science about scalded milk i mean people have tried to explain it scalded milk means it's not boiling but it just barely comes to a little boil around the edge and we will show that to you what it looks like but there is something about scalded milk in rolls that makes them wonderful. So I'm gonna go with the science someone told me because it's worked for me for 30 years or more. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the milk into my little saucepan, turn on the heat, and I'm gonna keep an eye on it because I don't want it, I want it to start coming up to a small boil, a small boil, and when it's ready, I'll show you what that looks like so that you'll know when it's ready to go. While I'm waiting for this to boil, and I'm going to check on it in just a moment, we're going to add a few of the other things that we need. But first, let me tell you about these oranges. This orange fresh joint zest, you cannot leave this out of the recipe. This is very important. This gives it that really zingy, yummy flavor. As a matter of fact, I take most oranges that I have, if I'm going to make anything out of it, and I use the zest first, so I keep it in my freezer all the time to have enough for any other recipe because I love using zesting. This is a zester. This is like my favorite tool. I use it for lemons, I use it for limes, and for oranges. And I keep as much on hand as I need to put in other dishes I like to make. So this is how I do it. Everybody has a different way, but as you can see, I've started zesting it a little bit already. You can see this is the, uh, you don't want to go below this pith right here in the orange. If you go into, it starts getting white when you do it. That means there's not that means you're going into a kind of a bitter part of your orange and you don't want to have that in your zest. So I'm going to be zesting probably a tablespoon of zest here. And I just go around and I just find a place where there's some orange peel to zest and I just keep going around and around. Looks like our milk has scalded perfectly. As you can see, there's little bubbles all around the, the edge, but it's not a full boil. So I'm going to turn everything off the stove here. I'm going to take my milk and come over and put it into my mixing bowl. There we go. Along with that, I'm going to add my sugar, which will dissolve in the warm water, hot water. I'm going to put my oil that I've measured out already. It's a half a cup. It's a third of a cup of sugar, a half a cup of oil. 
And I'm also going to put in a teaspoon of salt. There we go. I'm going to stir these together so that they can be dissolved in the nice hot, hot milk. Whoops. Meanwhile, we are not going to be adding our yeast yet because if you added uh, yeast into hot water, it would kill the yeast. And so that's why we need to add bread now. I mean, we need to add our bread flour into our mixture right now. Uh, oh, by the way, before we do that, let's go ahead and uh, put our, our zest in here. We want to reserve a little bit of zest because at the very end of our roast, we're going to be drinking a glaze. And we're going to be having brown, uh, a powdered sugar glaze with um, orange juice and zest in that part of the recipe. So we are saving a little bit of that. Meanwhile, we've already, um, we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of um, orange juice squats from here, probably about two to three tablespoons. And I've used up to a fourth of a cup because I love the orange flavor. So ever, it's up to you on your preferences. But I'm going to go ahead and pour in our orange juice as well into our milk mixture. Stir again. So we have our orange juice, our orange zest, we have our sugar, we have our milk, we have our salt and our oil all ready to go. And it's very warm. But that's okay. You don't have to wait for that to cool. We'll now take our one cup measure and one cup at a time we will be adding in our flour. Now adding in flour um, can be a little tricky because you have to, you don't want to go just with the recipe of five cups of flour because you have to watch the humidity. Something may be different in your home that day that makes uh, the flour not as soluble as regular you, regularly. So you want to add just one cup at a time until you know that it's the right consistency. Right now you can add up to probably two cups at the same time into your mixture because you know it's going to take a lot a little bit more than that and that's going to cause this to clump up a little bit and guess what that's okay too so you have a mixture here at this point i'm just going to put my little finger in here to see how warm that is to see if it's too warm still to add the yeast because then what happens is that the bread flour cools down the milk. So I'm going to stir this a little bit and that's cooled down that boiling uh, milk that we had at the beginning. The next thing we're going to do before we add the yeast actually is we are going to put two eggs in a little bowl and we're just going to put them in the up. We're going to add them to our mixture. And now we have all the ingredients ready before we have to raise the rolls, except the rest of the flour. Okay, now we're ready. As you can see, our yeast has bubbled up nicely. It was just in the bottom of the bowl and now it's bubbled up and it's proofed very nicely. We're going to add this to our mixture now. This is cup number three, just so you want to keep a little bit of track so you know you don't go over what you need. We're going to add one cup at a time.
It's about time to take my uh, dough out of the bowl because it's at a nice consistency where I just need to add a little bit more flour. The flour consistency is very important and so I'm going to put just a little bit of flour on my clean counter and I'm going to take my dough out. Now this is not a, this is a roll recipe where it's not like a bread recipe where you need it like 10 or 12 minutes to, um, to develop the gluten. These rolls are very light and fluffy and they don't need a lot of action. So it can be a little bit sticky to start, so I put a little bit of flour here. I'm going to kind of knead it a little bit to make it into a ball. Just adding a little bit at a time right now at this point. It's very soft to the touch and it's not um, heavy. It's extremely light because we've been treating it very lightly the whole time. Okay, as you can see, I'm just adding just enough flour so that it's not going to stick to my hands anymore. No more than that because you don't want to knead it too much anyway. So here we have our nice bowl. And what I do is I don't waste my bowl and go get another bowl to raise it in. I don't care that there's a little bit of fragment of dough inside my, my bowl. So I'm going to add some oil in the bottom of the bowl, just maybe a couple of tablespoons worth. And I just swish it all around with the back of my hand like this so that it will cover the whole Okay, I, I turned it upside down and now I'm going to turn it back this way as well so you can see the top of the dough is oiled nicely. I've now picked out one of my favorite nice clean towels. I get these in a four pack to use for all the rolls that I make so I'm going to be just be covering this right now um, and this is going to raise for about, about an hour and you want to have it so it's at least double in volume. So this is going to sit on the counter. If it's, um, if it's cold weather out or it's cold inside, I happen to have an oven that has a proofing, um, bread proof thing and you can put that in your oven with a, just a little bit warm and that will heat it up and you don't want it hot, just barely warm in there so that it can proof your dough and it will rise quicker if you need it to be quicker. I have found after making these rolls for so many years that it take, if, if you get the technique down, you can make these rolls in exactly three hours, and that's from start to finish when you're ready to serve. So uh, if you want to plan ahead so that you can have something super yummy like this ahead of time uh, for your family or your friends, you can kind of plan on that three hour time period for being able to have these rolls made and ready. Our dough has risen for a couple of hours and it's a little bit deflated at the moment. So this is what it looks like when it's had plenty of risen time. I'm going to punch it down right now. I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my pastry cloth and dump it out. I'm going to do a half. I'm going to cut this with my um, dough scraper and cutter right here. I love this tool. This works great for doing anything that you make with rolls or bread or anything and it also scrapes things off your counter or off your cloth when you need to have a good, it's a very sharp edge and actually can chop nuts as well, but this is a great little tool. Anyway, I'm going to cut this dough in half right now and use the other half in just a moment, but I'm going to do the first half first. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my, a little bit sticky still, so it needs a little bit more flour it looks like. So I'm going to prepare my cloth right here to roll it out. I have a little biscuit cutter that I'm going to be using. I'll show you how that works in just a moment. For this type of roll, um, I've done many rolls in many different shapes and sizes. But for this, these rolls, I'm going to be using a biscuit cutter and doing a Mar uh, Parker House type roll. And you'll see what that looks like. Okay, if you look at the dough, you can see it has little flecks of um, uh, orange zest in it. So you can know it's going to be really yummy. Okay, and what I do is I start out with just cutting out my rolls with my biscuit cutter. I've only probably um, 
This is only about a fourth of an inch thick. Some places are thicker than others. But this is going to make quite a few smaller type rolls rather than the big fluffy rolls I make with some of my other recipes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you we have a cube of butter. I'm going to put this in the microwave. All the rolls are rolled out and the rolls are all placed in the pan. I've given them a little space apart so that when they are fully risen, the whole pan will be nice, fluffy, big rolls just before you put them in the oven. So we're going to let these raise now for about the next 40 to 45 minutes before we put them in the oven. We're going to make the uh, orange glaze that goes with the orange rolls when they come out of the oven. I've got a one and a half cups of powdered sugar. This is the orange juice that I uh, spoiled a little bit earlier. We're not going to be using all of it. All of it. We're going to use a little bit at a time. This is the orange zest, which I'm going to go ahead and put in the powdered sugar. And then I'm just going to pour a little bit at a time until it's the right consistency. So it doesn't take very much of this orange juice to make the glaze. So, I'll stir this up a little bit. Needs a little bit more. So just add a little bit at a time till you get it. You don't want it to be too thin because you don't want it soaking into the rolls. It'll make them a little bit too soft and squishy. But you want it to be able to glaze easily over the roll when we put a spoon to it. Which you'll see in another segment of this video. Okay, so it did not take very much. Um, you don't need to make a lot of this glaze because it just needs to have a little touch of the orange glaze on it to make it delicious. Too much will make it soggy or it will just be too sweet. There we go. We're waiting for the rolls to raise and bake and then we'll be adding this to the top of the roll. Okay, our orange rolls have been raising for about 40 to 45 minutes and I'm ready to put them into a 350 degree oven for 20 minutes. Our orange rolls have just come out of the oven baking for 20 minutes. I let them rest a few minutes because you don't want to put the glaze on when it's too hot. So we let them rest for a few minutes and now I'm going to just use the kind of the back of the spoon and, and go ahead and glaze each one individually with my orange glaze that we made earlier today. You don't need a lot to make it really yummy. 